If you're restoring your fishing boat and you haven't checked out this store yet, you're doing it wrong. Come check out a store so complete with every last part you'll ever need for a DIY project in a boat restoration. From a DIY perspective, the best chance any of us have out of our garage to give a boat a professional looking paint job is through rolling and tipping, and sometimes through rattle cans. We'll be doing both of those things in this video in different spots to give you the best outcome possible. So first we need to guard the sections we don't want painted, so any sort of painter's tape from any hardware store will do. Also please be advised during this video that it is a compilation of not only the success and the end product, but a lot of the fails that go along the way. So you have an accurate description of what not to do, and also of course of what to do. And hopefully those together will give you an accurate job. For this video, I want this to be one of the most informative videos for rolling and tipping on YouTube. And it's only going to get better from here. The ideal situation would for be for you to paint the inside and outside of your hull before you even reach this point. That way you don't have to run into complications and do things like this. But if you did, make sure you wall off to prevent overspray over the crucial parts of the frame. Right, so I, just, I just roughed it. I missed the piece, but I took that sandpaper over there and I roughed this up. 220 grit. So actually, it's right there. We'll do the same to the other side. We're going to hit it with acetone and a rag, and we're gonna spray paint the inside. Fuck, that's it's terrible. For the inside, we're gonna rattle can it. And we're using Krylon Color Max, I believe. It's pretty good technology. Now the spray paint, it's, you know, when you're using the older Rust-Oleum stuff, you had to be pretty skillful with a can or it was a serious risk to end up orange pilling or getting your paint running. This stuff dries almost immediately. The technology in spray paint is pretty good. It's not gonna be the most durable, but again, this is the inside. So we just wanted a gray splash um, in the inside. In order to use the other stuff, we would have had to do a little bit more uh, drastic measures, but we're already too far into the framing part in the process to do that. And this is gonna work out fine. What you wanna do in these sections is you wanna make sure the paint is wet every time you go up one second you go up very smoothly you know eight to twelve inches away or six depending if there's wind and you want to go up down up down and you want to make sure every time you're overlapping with the paint the paint is wet when you're overlapping or you'll have uh these like flash points where it looks really faded out and not glossy to get the whole thing glossy go up and down up and down in a very smooth fashion we went non-stop with two coats of paint all around the entire gunnel. Also make sure you have a respirator, that's paramount. If anything, just get like a, one of the cheap ones from Harbor Freight, like the $18 throwaway ones. Those will last you the job for this stuff. Yesterday we painted the inside, which came out pretty cool. Now we're gonna have to paint the outside, but we're gonna paint the outside with some serious stuff. What we have here is Total Boat Aluminum Barrier, Aluminum Barrier, because a lot of people ask me, what type of primer should I use? So this is the toughest stuff you can really get for anything below or above the water line. It's uh, highly recommended by all my uh, fellow boat building colleagues, and I'm gonna use it today. This is a two-part epoxy uh, primer mixture. I'm gonna be mixing it in this tub. We're gonna be also using aluminum boat etch wash. So before I recommend a self-etching primer because that actually helps remove the contaminants in the aluminum and makes it a preppable surface for primer. But the whole thing is that the contaminants, once they're taken up by the etching agent into the 
the self-etching primer, they stay there and they eventually show through the paint and make the, the contaminants eventually erode the paints. So, as something that will get rid of all the contaminants and you immediately follow it by priming it. It's a two-part epoxy base. It needs time to cure, so don't be surprised that once you mix it all together, that it's surprisingly thin. You want to wait 30 minutes after mixing it all together like this before you actually apply it, or it'll like be splotchy and it won't actually stick or conform to the hole. It'll be a giant mess. There's actually a lot. Do not be deceived by the little tiny little cans. I swear that is enough primer to paint three boats. So you will have more than enough from one kit to do your boat twice. All right, there's a bunch of mill. There's a million holes right here. We're gonna fix all those holes with uh, closed-end pop rivets, five thirty-second inch thick. I just noticed these right now. How stupid. I just thought it was good to go, but there's like a bunch of freaking holes in the bottom. A lot of which were like not prepped. Or not even properly waterproof before they were just there, so... Kind of scary. And these are... These are specifically for like hull repair. These rivets, they're super short. Not a whole lot of functional use for anything else, but simply to seal up holes in a boat. And there's like 15 holes in the bottom of this boat, so... Kind of terrifying considering I have to prep and paint this thing. I'm just gonna leave them like that. So many. When Disgusting. you get a used boat, expect a bunch of random holes drilled into it. People from mounting anything from fish finders to internal stuff. And it always happens to be in the worst spots. Considering we only have about five minutes until that primer freaking cures, this is not what I want to be doing, but it's necessary. Now for the 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 etch wash spray, put in a spray bottle. And we are going to be spraying it. Alright, so I rinsed it. So no more or less just let it air dry. So that's what I'm doing. It's like a slight little bit of water right there. I'm gonna start from the front and back. We're gonna roll it. Okay, so fail one. No, don't do this. Don't put it on too thick. Multiple thin coats is way better than fewer very thick coats. You want it about pretty thin to avoid orange peel. Um, I just thought this stuff would dry way faster than it did. And actually, no, I had a lot of time before it ever dried. It dried pretty quick once it was on there, but in the actual kit, I was just worried about the hardener, the catalyst, worried about it, but it actually stayed um, pretty pliable for like over an hour. Like later on I checked, I thought it was gonna dry within 20 minutes and a half hour, so I kind of panicked and I spread it onto thick. And that was uh, the road to nowhere, as you'll see here pretty soon. Assuming you spread it right the first time and you avoided the orange pill, all you have to do is rough it up with 220 sandpaper. I would suggest wet sanding over traditional sanding paper as I later had to wet sand this and block it out anyways. And I was a much bigger fan of the wet sanding. I gave it a traditional wash, like a soap and water wash job. And then after that was done, I hit it with acetone to get off the any sort of residual contaminants. And we're wiping toward us. We're never like trying to do a circular motion where that's, that's just smearing the contaminants. And you want to flip your rag over multiple times once you see it get dirty. Little boat wet edge, one part polyurethane, top side paint. Special brushing thinner 100, two cups. So we're gonna run 10 ounces of paint and then one ounce of thinner.
and we will be using white sponge pads, okay? I cannot stress how important temperature is to this process. So trying to paint it in like 110 to 120 plus weather with humidity was my first big fail. On top of that, I was just unprepared with how to seam it up. Normally this stuff is supposed to take a day or two to dry. Um, at that time, it, it has a moment, it has the ability to lay out and cure over time the properly, but this stuff was actually like dry to the touch in a, an hour or so, and that's just unheard of. And it, I even it coated on extra thick. And when you coat this stuff on extra thick, it like will take a week or long or so longer to actually dry. But this stuff was just, it was still dry to the touch anyways. So point blank, the paint didn't have time to lay out the way it was. And even if it did, I put it on too thick. So it caused me problems anyway. So note, when you go like this, put it on thin. And when you think it's too thin, go thinner. Spread it as much as you possibly can and then tip it out. The other big problem I had was learning how to seam the paint together because you have to do it in sections as you tip it. And you need to tip it with a badger hair brush. I was using a standard brush here from the dollar store. That was fail. Don't do that. I get it all later. Just have faith. So, I don't know if you can tell, but the paint job came out pretty terrible with orange pill. Um, just lack of experience initially applying it. I would have totally done it differently um, if I'd have known. This is just, I'm going to have to block this out. I got a block, got sandpaper. It's going to be a miserable process. My son and I are going to block this out. I'm going to spare you from seeing it all. But super big fail, but it's a learning process. One thing that I can say about this paint and primer, super durable. If you get it right, this stuff is going to be phenomenal for your boat. And I know this because I had to sand all of it. It was a terrible experience because the stuff's so durable. I went through so many things of sandpaper. My son and I were just over it. It was pretty bad. Because I was so upset and burnt by the rolling and tipping method, I tried to use a Wagner sprayer on this, which is more or less a good version of saying, if you think the other version was bad, try this. Here I am trying to do a few like spray test runs to see if I can get it right before I go on the final thing. And I'm noticing like gross amounts of paint coming out of the sprayer and even worse orange pill. But I don't know, somewhere between desperation and the heat, I guess I'm blaming the heat. I tried it anyways. And yes, I did pay for it. Watch. I'm fortunate enough that when I tried to spray this, it's thick enough that it didn't dry and I can just scrape it off. I'm so very grateful because I've only really been out here for about 10 minutes and I got most of it off. Where last time when I I rolled and tipped it in orange peel, I think honestly, if I if I roll and tip it this time, the primer sanded down perfect. I think I can just make it work that way. I really do. I feel that is a thing. Um, I just got to scrape this off, hit it with the lacquer thinner to get the residual residue off. Obviously, resand it a little bit. And then go ahead and repaint it. But I'll I'll know what to do in terms of damage control during my learning phase, so I don't endure mass massive loss and failure like earlier. I can't deal with that again. So the road to painting. There's a reason why painting costs so freaking much. Sweet. All this the mountain of fail. A lot of failing going into that pile. Oh yeah, look at that. Doesn't that look good? Okay, round two. Plan here, don't do anything you just saw. Here we are spreading it very, very thin. Actually, I could have been thinner, but, and if I, I could have gone a lot thinner. It still did a little bit of peel slightly, but it was so much better and clearer, you'll see the difference, but definitely Go as thin as you possibly can with the paint, tip it, and then let it cure. This, we're gonna go a little bit slower here and show you more of the process of how I got it pretty decent. And another big thing was a weird odd cold front came in for like three days and it saved me. Because after this, it was just nothing but miserable heat and I couldn't get through it. But you're really just, you're rolling it in sections, 
you are just barely holding that brush running just the tip it's called tipping because only the tip of the paintbrush is going through and a badger hairbrush works the best the other big problem i had with my beginning one was trying to figure out how to seam it because you're supposed to do it in sections like this and then tip because if you do it for too long then it becomes a problem so the tipping is made to get any sort of distortions or air bubbles trapped in the paint out and so this is what we're doing rolling tipping rolling tipping checking any spots how we ended up getting rid of the seams is we roll over the seams with wetter paint and we tip a little bit farther down and it seemed to smooth it out for the most part very very well and that's how I got over the seam look so you can actually tell where there was a roll section if you do this right you can't even tell that it was rolled and you can't see any residual marks from the paintbrush And though it's not in here, I did use a very, very small brush to get in the crevices where that like side, like spine is and right underneath where the gunnel is. Obviously you can't get that with a roller. I did use a small little brush to get in the crevices. The other annoying thing was going over layer, seeing it glossy and then later on checking it. And it looked like the paint didn't form. I think that was a, like a byproduct of all the residual sanding and priming and just going through all that that had consequences so one seamless run if you can do it the payoff is you have a very very nice epically painted boat looks professionally done and you know yeah it takes a little bit of time but i swear this whole painting thing was 90 percent prep 10 percent of actual work uh finishing it off Remember, just the tip. That's all that needs to go through your paint. Don't try to put the whole brush through your paint. Use as little effort as you possibly can. The video is not over yet. The best is yet to come, so watch the whole video till the end. But before this is gone, I just want to take time to thank you guys for helping me get through this. In the end, it was you that motivated me to push past this instead of just saying screw it. And uh, I thank you so much. So. Just make sure you know what kind of medium there is. Make sure the temperature is there. Make sure you have the proper tools and the proper understanding for what kind of paint you're going to put. There's also a lot of different paints that you can roll and tip. And I'm not sure if they're the exact specs as how we did this one with a super thin rolling. But just make sure you check it out as best you can. All in all, this took forever. But it was so worth the learning process because when you can make your boat look like this... That's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned for the reveal. I got so much good footage. So many good things in this boat. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, leave a like and a comment and a share. Help it trend. Help grow the Tiny Boat Nation. If you want to support this channel directly, please check me out on Patreon or check out my Amazon store. All those contributions help more than you'll ever know to help fund projects like these. It's all about the tiller life. All about the Tiny Boat Nation. Keep building, keep fishing. Tight lines, everyone. Peace.